So Amy, what made you want to take Ananta's retreat? So I was very, very lucky in the fact that a friend of mine, actually the year before, had started telling me about Ananta and had been going to some of the satsangs. So I went to a satsang, very profound. It affected me deeply and she invited me to come and do a one-on-one -on -one with her. So it was hard for me. I had to even, I was very broke at the end of my time here in Thailand and I borrowed money to do it. and. Um, I'm so glad I did. It was amazing doing the one-on-one -on -one with her. It was transformative on many levels and it also, I was blessed enough to have an experience in this first one-on-one -on -one of awakening. It was brief, but I felt like I was one with everything and within that I felt a flood of joy, empowerment, freedom, all of the problems of the small self had fallen away and I felt one with the sunlight that was coming in behind her and the trees and it was it was a moment that I've drawn on ever since and though it was um, a glimpse of the potential that's been a big source of nourishment for me so when I came back to the island this year I was determined to do one of her retreats and again life started pushing me around and making it difficult 
Uh, so I came even a day late. I came, my key card had been eaten by a bank machine in Malaysia. I had to borrow money again. It was a whole thing. And um, again, I'm so glad I did it. It was, uh, it continues to inspire me and it continues to open up to me. Um, and Ananta made a comment which I learned afterwards because, uh, and I want to share this just for people if they have issues financially around these kind of things because so often we use money as an excuse around things that can help us or that we know we want to do but maybe we shouldn't because of blah blah blah. Um, in the start of the, I didn't have the money, I had to borrow it and I didn't have it at the time and she said please can you pay as soon as possible and I was like okay so I realized when and then I got an email saying uh, if you can do it this day when I brought the money and I paid the energetic commitment I'd made then to the retreat was very powerful because two days into the retreat your your shit starts coming up emotions come up and if I hadn't paid I would have run but by paying it made me stay and I'm so glad because it was that day that was the hardest that I had one of the most powerful experiences for my transformation and for my awakening um, so I really encourage people to to make the commitment and trust in the process and trust in Ananta she knows exactly what she's doing and she's coming from a total place of love and just wanting you to experience what she knows to be truth um, yeah I even get shivers thinking about it so this is what why <laughs> so what was your experience of the retreat itself the what retreat was it was very beautiful like I also liked how we started a bit later so I still had time for my morning practice at home even if that just consisted of having a cup of tea and being still um, and then we came the the group it was very interesting again to watch the experience because at first I was provoked by people in the group there were people I didn't I decided I didn't like or that they did things that I didn't like or whatever and um, by going through the the journey with Ananta as our captain um, by the end I loved everyone and I saw my projections I saw my fears creating my um, resistance to people and finding the same things that irritated me about them being the same things that made me love them and so the experience in itself even though it was only five days was so um, again transformative for me and it did bring up I did have days where I got challenged like what I just mentioned of, of not wanting to come back and making myself and then it was that day that I found again one of the most powerful and me actually seeing this stuff come up when and then Nancy helping guide because she can feel when there's something going on for you she sees when something's bubbling in you and she'll call you up to to name it and when you do you see how you can breathe it in and it dissolves there's this the thing I got from the satsang with her last year which continued in me um, and has been such a, a beautiful uh, support in my spiritual path is instead I was always trying I remember the first satsang I came and I did the classic thing that most people will do when they come to an entrance like yeah but how do you do that or I don't understand how I've got to make that happen or there's a thing of feeling the practice you know like how do I but I have to try there's this effort and she'll point at it time and time again and Ananta what I love about her so much is she's very loving and compassionate and she has a big heart and a time for anyone but she will pull you up on your shit and she will not hide from doing it she will show it to you like this and so she's like what do you you don't have to try anything and what I learned through the discussions and her giving me that time was that it's not anything about making something happen but it's a constant letting go and it's when this stuff comes up you it's instead of trying to be present you let go of the stuff that's stopping you from be present it's a very subtle shift in the mind but it makes a big difference and I found a lot of peace in that and a way to keep this constant acceptance and a constant letting go like things are allowed to be and you let them go there's this this awareness through it so that was a big help but going back to the experience of the retreat um, there were some things that really stood out for me that helped me um, that continue to help me now and there were the, the two of them that I wanted to share that I thought about before this this recording was 
one that she said, which was, you live what you value. And this one's really big for me. I keep remembering that because I see when I am avoiding doing my practice or I go, I should meditate, but I don't feel like it or whatever it is that I go through in my head. But even how we are as people, how we interact, what we want to cultivate, but you live what you value. And she really points to the valuing, you know, I mean, anyone can, a lot of people have moments of satori or awakening or experience, but how much do we value it? So this was really powerful. And another thing that um, she said that I've drawn on a bit and shared with people, which I really liked was, which is more important, that the object that you see or that which sees. And so I draw on that sometimes, like when I catch myself being caught in my mind and to bring myself back to awareness, tuning back into this part of me that sees that instead of me just seeing. So these, these things have been amazing, but the retreat um, experience itself, I felt very held in the space. It was very nourishing. I, getting to be with people I didn't know, I didn't know anyone really, there are only more acquaintances, to feel um, a love for people and this, this transpersonal love that's really powerful, this is what I'm aspiring to, is to, and instead of being able to witness ourselves, so there was a lot of, by the end of it, a lot of gratitude, a lot of gratitude, um, and I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> and how was your experience? with life, with things since the retreat? It's been, um, I was also fortunate enough to take time out for myself afterwards and do my own retreat and spending more time, like the confidence I have in myself more now because instead of trying to be something for other people, essentially other people's approval really when you look at it, I'm more self-accepting and allowing myself to be and, and taking that in and that's been um, a real gift because now I'm finding my empowerment by actually following the things I want to do and not focusing so much on um, seeking validation. Uh, this thing of remembering awareness, coming back to this oneness of everything, feeling more connected to nature, being more present and just enjoying being, all of these things continue to inspire me. I even had on the fifth day of my retreat I went for a coconut and I had the blessing of actually seeing Ananta, she turned up and um, I said I got really annoyed today and you know and I was resisting it, that's why I went for a coconut, like I was getting away from there you know, I, I was struggling because I got annoyed and, uh, and she said that's okay, be in it and straight away she brought me back of just coming back in this thing and this is what it's about, it's coming back to ourselves. There's a practice she, um, not a practice but a thing she's mentioned in the, I don't know if it was the satsang or the retreat where I first heard it but we breathe it into the heart and you exhale love and this has been really beautiful for me when I catch myself with things or if I have the awareness when I'm thinking something about someone or I have resistance in a situation to actually bring it into my heart and breathe out love and then the more confident you get in this the more you feel able to transform at the level of the heart the more pain of even other people's pain you can bring into the heart and exhale love you know love is infinite the power of our heart is infinite and it's having this again almost like self-trust and Anta, I think she, she said that she's no part of her that wants to make you reliant on her. She's trying to help you get back to you, you know, like it's a, and this is what's so beautiful. She's there as a guiding star and um, she's not aiming to make you a disciple. She's aiming to help you to awaken to your truth. Yeah. Sounds beautiful. Is there anything else you'd like to, to share before we finish? If you have the opportunity to um, come and experience Ananta. Her story in itself is one that I find very inspiring. Um, she's an amazing woman. One of the things, as I've touched on already in this, but that I love so much is that she will point out your shit. She doesn't pander you. She's not like, she's, there's all love in her eyes, but she will help you to to touch the things that you're resisting to touch to the, there's so much we hold down and we don't want to see and she will make you go there because this is where the transformation is um i continue to have beautiful experiences i continue to see things be aware of my resistance and also be aware of your resistance whoever's watching this um because it's it's through 
letting go that we can open, but it's we have to face it. And um, I, I am very, very grateful for having the the grace in this lifetime to have come across Ananta and to have done the retreat. And I can't wait till she gets back to Thailand. Um, so yeah, it's uh, to share is that for anyone, if you're half tempted, you have nothing to lose. And then I'm sure you'll have an experience like mine where you'll just be very grateful afterwards. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very Thank much, you. Amy.